the Honorable Minister of Health of the Republic of Rwanda, Dr. Daniel Ngamije, the Vice Chancellor, University of Rwanda, the RDF Service Chiefs, the Director of Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, UNICEF Country Representative, Excellencies Ambassadors here present, the Director General of Rwanda Biomedical Center, the Commandant of Rwanda Defense Force Command and Staff College, General Officers, Senior Officers, Distinguished Guests, Panelists, Moderators, Faculty Staff, Student of Course 9. Good morning. A warmly welcome to the eighth edition of the National Security Symposium. For the last nine years, National Security Symposium has been providing an, an opportunity to examine key trends and uncertainties that shape our strategic environment. It affords the student, but indeed all of us, an analytic framework to appreciate the complexities of the global power dynamics as we navigate an unpredictable future. The central component of the symposium has been our interactions with different people with technical know-how and familiarity in different purviews. We benefited greatly from previous conversations with esteemed academics and researchers across a range of disciplines and we are hopeful this one too will serve the purpose. Over time, National Security Symposium has broadened our perspective through listening to diverse views ranging from business people, policy makers, securocrats, experts, and scholars. These discussions offered us new ideas and ex expertise, challenged our assumptions, and helped us to identify and understand our biases and blind spots. Distinguished guests, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, since the last time we held the National Security Symposium in 2019, the world is not the same again. The shared challenges have multiplied and are likely to manifest more frequently and intensively in almost every region and country. These challenges will produce widespread strains on states and uh, societies, as well as shocks that could be tragic. The ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has marked the most significant singular global disruption with enduring health, economic, political, and security implications that will ripple for years to come. The fusion and cascading effects of these challenges will throw to at us more demanding situations. National security will not only require to defend against traditional threats, but will also be summoned to withstand and adapt to these emerging challenges. Addressing these transnational challenges will be difficult, compounded in part by increasing fragmentation within communities, states, and the international system. 
Ironically, as the world has grown more connected, the very connectivity has divided and fragmented people and countries. The Internet of Things encompassed 10, million, 10 billion devices in 2018 and is projected to reach 64 billion by 2025. On one hand, this connectivity will help produce new efficiencies, conveniences, and advances in living, living standards. On the flip side, internet is now an arena for conflict. We are all caught up in it and living dangerously. The scale of the transnational challenges and the implications of fragmentation are exceeding the capacity of existing systems and structures. There is an increasing mismatch at all levels between challenges and needs with the systems and organization to deal with them. The international system, including the organizations, alliances, rules, and norms, is poorly set up to address the compounding global challenges facing us. The COVID-19 pandemic has provided a stark example of this, the weaknesses in international coordination on health crises and the mismatch between existing institutions, founding levels, and future health challenges. Within states and uh, societies, there is likely to be a persistent and a growing gap between what people demand and what governments and the private sectors can deliver. As a result of these disequilibrium, institutions and norms are strained and or worse still broken. We are struggling to build model, models for the new normal. The imbalance between what is required and what is available will lead to conflicts within communities, states, and the international community. Many societies will increasingly be divided among identity affiliations and at, at the risk of greater fracturing. Relationships between societies and governments will be under persistent strain as the as states struggle to meet rising demand from populations. As a result, politics within states are likely to grow more volatile and contentious and no region, ideology, or governance system seems immune or to have the answers. At the international level, the, geopolitics, the ge geopolitical environment will be more competitive. Major powers will jockey to establish new rule, rules of the game, bend or exploit old norms. This contestation will play out across domain from information and media to trade and technological innovation. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, adaptation will be both an imperative and a key source of advantage and the earlier we figure that out, the better. Some measures will be inexpensive and simple. Others will be complex and costly in terms of resources or still harder it may cost lives. Technology will be a key avenue for gaining advantages through adaptation. For example, 
countries that are able to harness productivity boost from artificial intelligence will have added advantage that could, could allow governments a degree of resilience. The benefits from the technology will be unevenly distributed within and between states and will probably reveal and intensify inequalities. The most effective states will be those that can build societal consensus and invest in collective action and harness the relative expertise, capabilities, and involve non-government actors to complement state cap capacity. All these challenges put together have reminded us the world that, but more particularly, we as Africans, the fragility of our times and inherent risks of high levels of interdependence. Suffice it to say, the need to interrogate the effectiveness of our security architecture to respond to emerging threats has become more urgent and important that experts, scholars, policymakers, and security practitioners find an opportunity to make sense of new normal. Let me conclude by insisting that as a continent, we will never have the classical and conventional means to deal with contemporary challenges and threats the world is facing today without working together toward a common goal. To achieve the goal of Symposium 2021, I would like to request discussants and participants to be more imaginative and creative in finding solutions for the existing challenges. Finally, let me use this opportunity to commend the commandant and his entire administration, officials of the University of Rwanda for organizing this event. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, it's now my honor to declare National Security Symposium 2021 officially open. Thank you so much.